There are countless hands-on projects out there. Which five hands-on projects should you do to get a cloud DevOps job? I'm a senior solutions architect working at AWS. Yes, I work for world's largest and leading cloud provider, but I have not started my journey there. I switched my career from mainframe to the cloud. So as part of that, I had to do some hands-on project. I have also taken more than 100 interviews for cloud, both for freshers as well as experienced professionals. So whatever I'm going to share absolutely works and based on my real world experience. Whichever hands-on projects I'm going to share today, I'm going to give the relevant links in the description. So please check them out. This is the important part that most of the people don't know or do not mention. You need a structured way to do the hands-on projects. You have to have different patterns of hands-on projects so that the interviewer can see if I put this person in this kind of project, yes, he has done some hands-on on that. In another kind of project, yes, he has done some hands-on on that. So I'm sure this part is a little unclear. So that will become clear by the end of this video. The first and most important hands-on projects that apparently no one else talks about, but it's used all the time in real-world projects is modular Lego block hands-on. These kinds of hands-on are not full-blown end-to-end projects. Rather, they work like a Lego block which could be used in different kinds of projects. In that area, you must do a hands-on project on microservices. Microservices are used in almost all applications. If you have a microservices example, then the interviewer knows that you can be useful from day one. Not only you know what is microservice, how it works, but you also know the challenges. More on these challenges and what things you should do for each hands-on later, and I'll give the timestamp at the bottom. In this microservices hand-on, create a API hosted on API Gateway with the backend on Lambda, and then a database on DynamoDB. You must do these four operations on this microservice. Insert some data, read that data, update that data and delete the data. And for all the hands-on, don't just copy paste from the link, you must understand how they work. The second modular Lego block architecture that is super important is event-driven architecture. Event-driven architecture is super popular right now. In event-driven architecture, the producer and consumer are decoupled from each other. And because they're decoupled, the producer and consumer can scale independently and because of that, this kind of architectures can handle massive amount of scale. Almost all current popular application that you use today uses event-driven architecture in some form. Event-driven architecture is also more cost-effective than synchronous architecture. Because of the current economic condition, I am seeing that customers are more interested in implementing event-driven architecture than ever before. So you must do a hands-on on event-driven architecture. What are some of the AWS services on this area? Amazon EventBridge, Amazon SQS, SNS, and then the compute that can be used with all of this is Lambda. Now, because we already did a hands-on with Lambda, you should do a different hands-on with the event-driven architecture without using too much of Lambda. I'm going to give a link where different messages come into EventBridge and there are some validation. It validates whether some fields are present in the message. If particular fields are present, then it invokes a Amazon API gateway. For certain fields, it invokes AWS step functions. And for certain fields or certain values in the fields, it invokes Amazon SNS. This hands-on project is great because not only it shows you have done event-driven architecture, but you have used four different event-driven architecture services. Now going forward from modular Lego block architecture, you should do one quick start. And the most important project and the most popular one is creating a web application using WordPress. So now there are different ways to create WordPress. You can run a Elastic Beanstalk, super, super popular. Everyone mentions it, I'll give the link. Alternatively, you can also run a CloudFormation and create WordPress. Either way is fine. However, you need to understand how it is actually working. I have taken interviews where the candidate has done this exact hands-on. And then when I asked, can you explain to me how this actually works? Can you replace this Elastic Beanstalk with something else? Can you tell me what the Elastic Beanstalk is actually doing? The candidate has no answer. 
implement this and you understand this architecture. So the next project is a DevOps project and is applicable if you are going for DevOps jobs. You must implement a infrastructure as code deployed from Jenkins. For infrastructure as code, you can select Cloud Formation if you're going for AWS or you can select Terraform. The beauty of this project is the impact is widespread because this project is very generic. If the company you are interviewing to uses Kubernetes in your cloud formation or Terraform, provision a Kubernetes cluster, and that's it, it will start working. If the project you are interviewing uses EC2 or Fargate or Lambda, doesn't matter. Once you do this hands-on, you are literally ready to provision any cloud infrastructure using this hands-on. Now the next project is related to DevOps. It is a GitOps project for Kubernetes. I really, really recommend you to learn Kubernetes because the job market is difficult and Kubernetes is hard. Whoever knows Kubernetes will have an advantage. With GitOps, you get away from traditional DevOps and you use Git as the single source of truth. Anytime something changes in your cluster, Kubernetes reconciles with your GitHub repository and grab the changes and deploys it. So when I'm talking with actual customers, they are using either DevOps or GitOps. So if you cover both DevOps and GitOps, that's a great way to impress your interviewer. And I have a detailed link along with GitHub repository. So feel free to check it out. I'll give the link down below. Now the last project is a fun one as well as very handy. Creating your resume from a static website. You can do three different variations of this project. First, you just host your resume on a S3 bucket, just expose it using the URL. That's the most simple version done free of charge. You can go one step further. If you just host your resume from S3 bucket, it will be a URL which will be insecure as in HTTP. If you want to make it a little bit fancier, you can integrate CloudFront with the S3 bucket. That way the URL will be HTTPS, so it will be SSL enabled, as well as this will allow faster response from all over the world because CloudFront will be deployed on edge locations. If you want to really impress and want to know a little bit on the networking side, implement Route 53. So in this solution, you have a custom domain, maybe rajdeepsaha.com or bobspeed.com, whatever your name is, get that URL and in Route 53, using an Elias record, forward the traffic to the CloudFront distribution you have created. Note that for this third variation, you do need to spend money because to buy a domain, you need to pay some money to AWS. But for the third solution, it is secure as well as you can choose a custom URL. That is what I did to host my resume. All right, couple of tips on hands-on. Number one, whatever hands-on projects you do, you need to know these four things. How can you scale the solution to a higher degree? How can you make the solution highly available? This one is very important right now because of the economic condition. How can you cost optimize the solution? And number four, how do you secure the solution? All the hands-on projects that I mentioned, think through that. If you have questions on it, put it in the comments on how to scale this one, how to secure that one, I'll answer it. Do not just copy paste the projects. There are a lot of complicated projects out there. For example, serverless e-commerce solution, different front-end solution. If you just copy paste and run the projects, interviewer is gonna ask you deep dive questions. You won't be able to answer, you will lose trust. Next tip, don't create a service soup. You know how a soup is made, bunch of stuff is thrown together, you just mix it and the soup happens. Do not create a solution where there are five, six, seven different AWS services which you do not know interviewer is gonna catch you on that. Last tip, don't be shy of using the console for your hands-on projects. No one is expecting you to be expert on infrastructure as code from get-go. And if you do use console to do the hands-on projects, create a really nice readme file where you show how you did that. For example, I am creating a microservice simply using console, but I really explained everything how to create the Lambda function along with screenshots and the interviewer recruiter and the other folks will be impressed. All right, hopefully these hands-on projects and tips take your career to the next level. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one.